Hey, what's up? It's Dan Liu. In this video, we are going to walk through how to install a Facebook pixel into your ClickFunnels funnel. Now, the beginning part of this video is going to be me talking about a pixel for those of you who aren't quite sure exactly what it is. So if you're just looking for the step-by-step, -step, go ahead and skip this part of the video. So what is a Facebook pixel? Simply put, it's a piece of code that allows Facebook to track visitors to a specific website or funnel page, and then also track the triggering of events, which are specific actions that a person takes. And a Facebook pixel is primarily used for Facebook advertising so that Facebook and yourself as the business can collect data for your marketing campaigns. So the first step is to install the main pixel code. Now, you're going to be able to install it across your entire website or your entire funnel just by pasting in a snippet of code into the header section. Now, this is assuming that you already have a Facebook ads account and that you just need to install the code into your funnel. So let's say somebody's on their smartphone or they're on their laptop or computer and they go to your website or your sales funnel. Right away, the pixel code is going to be able to track all your website and sales funnel visitors. So once you have your main pixel installed, you have to then install specific events to specific pages so that Facebook knows who's considered a visitor, who's considered a lead, and a customer and so on. So when you are installing your pixel, you want to sketch out your funnel process, meaning your funnel steps, and then think about what type of event each page is going to be considered. So you can check your options of the different types of events within the Facebook pixel setup tool. So let's take a look at an example. Say somebody comes to your landing page now, Facebook is going to know that that person is now considered a visitor because they have viewed your content. And let's say they take the action, they submit their email, and they hit the thank you page. Well, we're going to set it up so that when somebody hits that specific page, Facebook is going to know that that person is now a lead because the only way to have gotten to that page is by submitting their email address. Then let's say they hit the sales page. So we can let Facebook know that now this person is in a step where they've initiated a checkout and then we can have that certain event fire off within our pixel. And then let's say they actually go and make a purchase, then they get taken to the confirmation page. So they've actually entered their credit card, they've submitted, and now they're going to a page that's basically their receipt confirming their purchase. We're gonna let Facebook know that this person has completed this step and to trigger the purchase event. Now, when a pixel code is fired and it's assigned to visitors, you can put people into what's known as audiences. And you can think of audiences as buckets of people that have completed certain actions or events. And then from there, you can create custom audiences that allow you to remarket to that specific audience depending on where they are in the entire sales process. And the reason you have different audiences is because how you remarket to a visitor that is or isn't a lead yet differs from how you market to somebody that is a lead and maybe didn't buy your product or service yet. So your goal is to get them to take that next step. So your messaging and your approach is going to be different depending on where they are in the marketing and sales process and which audience or bucket that they're presently in. So again, to show you visually, let's say you have this bucket here that's filled with people that have become leads. They've entered their email address and now you're sending them a follow-up email campaign. Well, you can also remarket to them and your messaging is going to be for people who have opted in to let's say get your lead magnet, but haven't yet initiated their checkout. They haven't hit your sales page, but let's say your remarketing ads work. They now go to your checkout page. Now they're in this bucket or in this audience, and now your messaging is going to be different. 
So these people have seen your sales page, they've seen your sales message, but they haven't yet become customers. So the goal of this remarketing campaign would be now to get people to actually buy, make a purchase and become a customer. And now let's say they're in this bucket, right? They have that uh, purchaser tag that puts them into this specific audience. Maybe now you have a different marketing campaign that makes additional offers for other things that you uh, offer as a business. All right, so that was a super brief introduction to a pixel to help you understand um, what it is and how it works. And hopefully the visuals helped you be able to really understand the concept of the Facebook pixel. All right, so once you're inside your Facebook ads manager, you can either go up to the search bar here and type in pixels, or you can go here and click on events manager. Now, if you're working with multiple ad accounts in your business account, you want to make sure that when you're setting up your pixel, you're actually using the right ad account. So you can see there, I had a drop down menu. So if you only have one, then that's going to be your default. But if you have multiple, make sure you're working in the right one. And then if you're setting up a brand new uh, pixel, you might have to hit a button that says add new data source or something like that. Now I've already set up this pixel, but I'm just going to go through uh, the steps as if I haven't set it up yet. So what you want to do is click on the add event button here and you want to find where you can install the code manually. So Facebook's constantly updating their interface. So when you watch this, um, it might be a different button on this page, but you can just kind of click around and, and hopefully you'll get to uh, somewhere where you'll see manually add pixel code to website. So I'm going to click that button and I'm going to copy this code here. So it's a very easy button to just grab the entire code. And then inside of click funnels, you want to go to the specific funnel that you're looking to track. So once you're in here, you go to the settings for the entire funnel. And then you're going to want to paste it in where it says head tracking code. So you can see I've already pasted it there. So once you paste it in there, go down and make sure to save and update your settings. And again, that pixel code is going to be uh, applied to all of your funnel steps here. So you only have to install that in one place. So once that's done, let's go back to the steps. And the next thing we want to do after we install the main code is to then set up our events. So again, events are specific actions that people have taken that triggers the uh, code to fire and tells Facebook, Hey, this person went to this page, which means they triggered a specific event. So once you're done here, you can go to continue. And you can do this route here um, by adding event codes, but we're going to use the custom conversion route. So I'm going to X out of that. And to get to custom conversions, you can either hit this create custom conversions from this drop down menu or on the side here, you can see custom conversions. So I'm going to click that one. So we're going to click on the create custom conversion. We want to name our conversion event here. So we're going to call this lead. We'll go down here to conversion event, and then we can see the different standard events right here. So we can select lead. Now there's also other ones too. So let's say we have all URL traffic. We can go to select your own category and we can see all the different options we have here. So add to cart, Maybe somebody's added a payment info, completed a certain registration. Maybe that's for a webinar um, and so on. So lots of different options here, but we're going to use a standard event here. So we're going to say lead and then where it says URL contains, we're going to leave that as is, but what we want to do is go ahead and grab the URL of the page. That's going to trigger that event. So for a lead, I need the thank you page. So after somebody comes to the opt-in page, they submit their email, they're going to the thank you page. And then that's going to tell Facebook that this person 
has become a lead and to label that person uh, through this event. So what you want to do is make sure that you are grabbing the right URL. So to open up the URL for a specific page within ClickFunnels, you want to click this button here and you don't want to just grab what you see here because it's not the same. So once you click this button, it should actually open up the page. And from there to grab the URL, you want to grab the root domain and then the path or what comes after the .com. So you don't actually need the www or the https. So once you highlight that, we're going to copy it. Let's go into Facebook. We're going to paste, hit enter, and then we can hit create. Okay, so we're gonna hit done. So once you create your custom conversion event for leads, you can then go and continue on with the rest of your funnel and then create events for every page uh, where it makes sense. So maybe your sales page is the initiate checkout, maybe it's the add uh, payment info, uh, depending on if they actually added their payment info. And then the last one would be when they make a purchase. So if you go to create custom conversions, you want to say maybe they purchased the product uh, so you can label it purchase you can come down here to conversion event and hit purchase and then same thing like your uh, thank you page you want to type in the URL for your confirmation page which is the page after somebody actually puts in their credit card and submits their order once you create all of your different custom conversions, you want to go through uh, your actual funnel process and make sure that everything is being triggered as it should be. So right now it says inactive, but once the uh, pixel is ready and the events are set up, then it should say active with a green button. Now, one thing I do recommend is to install the Facebook pixel helper. I'm using the Google Chrome extension. So I'm able to use a lot of different extensions here that help out with various things, but the pixel helper will actually help you um, know whether or not a page or a website or a funnel is using a pixel or not. And then it'll also tell you if that specific page is firing off a certain event. So you can see here, this is the thank you page and the lead event is being fired and you can see the green check boxes, which means it is being fired successfully. All right, so from there, uh, again, you wanna make sure you have it all set up for each of the important events of your funnel. And then we're not gonna dive into it here, but if you go to data sources, we talked earlier about your audiences and having different buckets of people. So you can go to create, create custom audience, and then from here, you can actually put in uh, people who visit specific pages or from the events. So we talked about putting people in a bucket that are just leads and then people that initiate their checkout and then people who actually became customers or made a purchase. So this is where you would create your custom audience. So you can just select a lead here and basically Facebook's going to build an audience of everyone that has become a lead or fired off that lead uh, event code in the last 30 days. Now you can increase that uh, to 180, but this is where you would create your custom audiences and then you would label it. So let's say maybe these are people that have just become leads here and then you would just create that audience. And then once you go to create your actual remarketing campaign or retargeting, then when it comes time to choose who to actually show your ads to, you can select from your list of custom audiences. All right, so that concludes this video on helping you understand the Facebook pixel and then setting it up for your funnel inside of ClickFunnels. Hopefully it gave you some clarity in terms of what a Facebook pixel is, how it's used, and then how to actually go through the process of setting it up for your funnel. So once again, make sure that you set it up for each of the important uh, pages within your funnel so that you can track where people are in your sales process. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you got value out of it, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and let me know if you have any questions in the comments section or any other topics for future videos.
Thanks so much. This is Dan Liu. Take care, and I'll talk to you in the next video.